I'm going to sing one. Amen. Lord well, I'm going to. <laughs> we'll say that much anyways, huh? Bless you, Lord. This is one we all know, but I ain't saying it for a while, so. Amen. God is good, isn't that true? All the time. Amen. Amen. Even our worst hour, it's better, without, it's better with him than it is without him. Amen. All right, Jerry, sing with me when you pick up on this song. God tells me I was sitting. out there, you know God's telling you to preach this message, and you don't want to preach it, you better preach it. I said, okay, God, I'll preach it. Amen. And then uh, I kind of, it just a couple days went, and and I, I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't start on, the, you know, any, any any research on the topic, any, any, nothing on the sermon. I lay down and went to bed, and I had a dream. Sure enough, what, what the, the mess, I got the message clear in the dream. To preach what I tell you or suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I said, okay, Lord. I sat down that day and I started out on this message. You know, there's there's a there's a group called the Barna Group. Maybe some of you have heard of them, some of you hasn't. But they're a Christian organization. And what they do, they go they call churches and they 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 basically they ask the question they ask questions to the congregations. And and what they, the reason they do that is so that the, mostly for ministers, but anybody can get on the internet and look up the Barna Group and see these these uh, surveys that they take, and it gives the preachers and the pastors and the ministers an idea of what's going on in the church. Amen. So we know where the where where the mindset of the church is. Amen. On different subjects, but uh, on on in a, they've done they've done multiple ones on on pornography and sexuality. Sixty-eight percent of Christian men in the United States view pornography on a regular basis. 
So in other words, they ask them, are you a Christian? Do you profess to be a Christian? And they'll say, do you view pornography? 68% of them said that they view it on a regular basis. 50% of pastors admitting to viewing pornography on a regular basis. 50%. How many of your pastors in sin, you're in trouble? <laughs> you need to get out of that church because you can't be shepherded by someone in sin. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're not watching that so they can find the, the, the latest clothes trans church, are they? Amen. They're watching it for their own self-gratification. 37% 30, of Christian women watch pornography on a regular basis. 37%. Think about that for a minute. You may not dare to think that women don't like sex. <laughs> Amen. They do, don't they? Amen. And uh, so, you know, we have half the church, basically, is it living in sin and headed to hell. And we're ashamed to open our mouth and say anything about it. Because we're not doing in church. Amen. And I said, God, when I really got into this, I said, God, forgive us our apathy. Amen. And our lightheartedness. Because it, this is a, a major blot on our churches, amen. Because it's one thing if they're a sinner, amen. But if you're in a church and you're in sin, you got issues, don't you, amen? And there ought not to be any blood on none of our hands. Most of you people here are, are in this congregation are older than me. Some of you got grandkids older than me, mm -hmm. amen. Some of you do. And I, I look at this message tonight. It's not really necessarily that I know. It's not necessarily directed at any one person here individually in the church. But I, I, I think it's an informative message so that you understand what's going on. And you know how to deal with this issue when you come across it. Because you will come across it. We have a generation of children coming up that you, if you don't understand what's going on in their life, you, you get ready because you're, you're, you're not going to like what's coming up in the next generation. Amen. 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 You know, so, you know, but I had to repent. I said, God, you know I'm wrong. If you tell me to do something, I need to do it. So I did it. Amen. I repented. And here I am, standing up in front of Paul, preaching this sermon. Amen. I mean, no, we just preach. We preach the message that God gives us. Then we church, Amen. Amen. And that, that's not just for us preachers. If God tells you to tell somebody something, you just have to do it. Amen. No apologies. Just tell them what God. If it's God, then it's good. Amen. If it's God, it's good. You know, and then I, I, I don't really struggle with this anymore, but just because that I've, I've cast it down so much. But I used to come into church, and I, I the preacher, oh man, that's that's a really strong message. I wonder who that message is for. Uh -huh. Oh, that's for Sally Sue back there, or that's for Bobby Joe over there. Amen. How many know that's wrong? Amen. That's a vain imagination. You need to cast that down. God is not telling you that. Amen. That's the devil. Amen. That's the devil. Amen. You know, that's a vain imagination. Cast that out of your mind. Cast that out of your mind. And you can do it as a preacher, too, and you can think about it. And you just can't. You can't. You have to give the message that God gives you. Whether you're in the pulpit or you're out in the world, amen, and God is telling you to deal with something, you have to give that message, amen. And you don't, you, don't, you don't do it in malice, you don't do it in hate, you don't do it in anger, amen. You do it in the spirit of love, amen, in the spirit, amen, for the saving of their souls, don't you? You know, and so what, uh, church, what if someone comes up to you and says, well, brother, I got some kind of sexual addiction. I have a problem with pornography. Or ladies, what if another woman comes up to you and says, my husband watches porn, he masturbates to it all night long, and won't have nothing to do with me? Because I've had that, both of them situations. People look at me right now and tell me that. Usually after I pry it out of them. Because there was something, oh, there's something going on in my marriage. I'm like, then I start asking questions. You know, you got sometimes you got to be a detective with people. You know, they'll say something's wrong, and then you start asking them questions. Is this going on? Well, what is this, amen? And you pry it out of them, you know? You know, help me, my marriage is falling apart, pastor or, or preacher. Well, got, you got any forgiveness in there, either one of you? Because that's a big one right there, amen. One, one, one partner does something to the other, makes them mad, and now the other one's got no forgiveness. And another one I always like to ask people is, any, any, any two of you watching pornography? There's 80% of the marriage issues in the church right now, right there. Unforgiveness and pornography. And if you, if you touch them, you've probably got most of the concerns of the church <laughs> right there, Amen. And, uh, you know, some, some, it, it, there's some kind of root of bitterness comes up, or someone is addicted to pornography, or sometimes you'll see one spouse will use sex as a weapon against the other. I mean, we, we want to say, oh, it's always women using sex against men, but that's not always true. Sometimes men use sex against weapons. They get mad, and they say, well, you can't, we're not going to have no sex. How many know that that's a real, you're heading for a divorce, usually, or an affair, amen, when that happens in a marriage, don't it? Amen. So ask questions. And if they squirm, look them in the eye and ask them again. 
<laughs> Amen. That's the way you got to be. Amen. If they're seeking your help, if they're coming to you asking a question, then you need to be there to answer them. I mean, you need to be there to answer them. You need to, you need to be able to, to answer them. I, I just got a call a few days ago. It don't really matter who the person is. The person that I knew, and I, they've been struggling with sexual issues. They've been, you know, they were sexually dysfunctional, and they went from marriage to marriage. And every marriage would fail because how many of you, if you go into a marriage and you got sexual issues, they're going to follow you right into the marriage. Amen. Amen. But I got a phone call the other day. She's 45-year-old. She's dead. I hit on in a collision. And it bothered me. Amen. It still bothers me to the day. And probably to the day I die, I'm going to take that, what happened to that woman. As far as I know, her heart wasn't right. Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe she cried out to God in the last second that she got impacted and was saved. I don't know. Amen. But how many know that, you know, th these things are serious in the church, amen? Sin is not a child's game, is it? Amen? And there is sin in our churches, church, and we have to root it out no matter what it is. I mean, I, I made a goal for this for this teaching, amen, and that's to prepare you to be able to counsel people in sexual addictions, amen, by assuring that you have an understanding of what's going on and the principles in the scriptures to deal with it, amen? Sitting in the pews wondering, uh, who's this message for? That don't solve nothing, amen. Maybe it's for the preacher that's preaching it. Maybe he needs to hear it just as much as everybody else, amen. But if you listen, if you listen, you may save a soul someday, amen. You may save a soul. You know, our society, if, 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 maybe some of you, you grew up in a different age and a different time than I did, but even in my generation, society is so hypersex. Everything is so hypersexual. Have you ever noticed that? You know, people watch television, they watch music, they watch video games, and they have little discernment about what they're putting in front of their eyes and what they're putting in their ears. Amen. You ever thought about that? And I'm going to tell you, church, witchcraft is in play. Now, I, I do not believe that a television is wrong. I do not believe that music is wrong. But I believe that they can be wrong. Amen. If, they're, if, it, if it's demonic, it's wrong. Amen. And if, if, if you are in some kind of sexual addiction... And you don't have the discernment to see what's going on in front of you. Then you, then that is literally because how many know that movies and things and music and things like that they have witches cast spells on that stuff before they put it out. Amen. To put you in the, when one one of the sins is a sexual sin. Why? Because well, there's a lot of reasons for that we're not going to get into. But that's that's a big one. If, if the devil can get you into a sexual sin, he knows that he's the, he's wreaked a real havoc in your life. Not only yours, but everyone that's around you. Amen. Your wife, your husband, your children. Amen, even your grandchildren, because it can end up evolving into generational curses, can it? Amen. So we've got to be careful. We've got, we can't be unaware of the wiles of the devil. Amen. And what does the scripture say? Can a man take fire into his bosom and not get burned? He can't. And neither can a woman. Amen. But can't. So church, there's no there's no loving commandment in the scripture anywhere that says that people shouldn't masturbate. Amen. They should but there is principles in the scriptures. How many know, if the truth be known, if the person is willing to look, anything, any question that you have on how to live your life is in the scriptures. It's all there. It is. Absolutely every last one of them. Amen. It just might require that we search it out and look it out. Amen. So, you know, I, I, I've, I've had a few people ask me about this subject. And then I've told a few other people what I found. And, and, and you know, that word masturbation is not, it's not in the scriptures. But there is words, you, you can look up the word omission, and he spilled the seed. You see them terms in there, that's, that talks about it. It is in the scriptures, amen. And there is some things that the scripture talks about. So I'm going to go over six reasons why that is a sin in the scriptures. And the first principle in the scripture that you see why it is a sin is that our bodies are not our own. Amen, our bodies are not our own. If we are single, if we are single, our body belongs to the Holy Ghost and Jesus. Amen. Now, if we're married, we share that body with our spouse. Amen? As a married man, I do not have God's permission to do anything sexual gratification for myself. I cannot. Why? Because my body is not for me. My body is for my wife. Amen? And my wife's body is for me. Correct? We we'll always understand that in Scripture. So that is a design by God for my wife's pleasure and vice versa, Right? So, uh, you know, viewing pornography, lusting, and masturbation, it takes away from that concept that God has made that for you. Man, he's made it for the marriage bed, hasn't he? Man, and that's it. 
we stay in that context, we're in good shape. Amen. And uh, you know, so some, uh, so, you know, some dis- oh, excuse me, some some disagree with this next point in a little bit, but I'm I'm going to share it with you and, I, and how I've seen this in the scriptures. If you're single. You know, because listen, we were, you know, when, we're, when we were teenagers, we were just nothing but raging hormones, weren't we? Amen? If, if, if you're single and you can masturbate without lusting after another person, then I can see nowhere in the scripture that says that's wrong. Now, and if the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of that, then, then you're fine. But if you lust in your heart after another person, what does the scripture say? Anyone that lusts after another person in their heart has already committed adultery. Isn't that what it says? And our society is so hypersex. There are so many sexual images and so many sexual sounds coming into their our minds from televisions and radios and people talking out on the streets. I mean, people will just have you ever noticed how people they'll just go out in public and they'll just blurt anything out. They don't care. They'll talk about their sex life and, and how they slept with the neighbor and her husband yeah. caught him and this kind of stuff. And I'm like, you're right out in public. If you don't have that, people don't have no shame, I and mean, they don't. So that you know, so if, if you're single and you can do that, good luck to you. That's between you and the God, you and you and God, Amen. But I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. But some people say that it is, Amen. And I, and I, I'm going to say this: in in the, in the world, and to our shame in the church, sexual dysfunction is the norm. It is the norm in the church, Amen. And preachers will not get up in the pulpit and preach about it hardly. Very, I've seen very few preachers. You can't even hardly get them to get up and preach about adultery and fornication, let alone anything else. Very rarely will you ever hear anything, amen. You know, uh, ladies, I can't speak for you, but I know that women are sexual beings too. But every man, I guarantee you, every man that I've ever known, at some point in their life is going to struggle with lust. At least, at least, at least through their teenage years and their early years. At least, amen. But you know, the there's a dis- there's a d- distinction between a sexual problem and a sexual addiction, and just what the scripture calls burning, burning, amen. Mm-hmm. So if you have a natural desire for sexual intercourse, what does the scripture say you do? You marry, you marry, right? And your husband and your wife, you take care of each other, and that that's not a problem, okay? It says you don't deny each other except for what? What does the scripture say? Except by consent, amen. Uh, only for a season. If you both agree of so that you can fast and pray. And then what does it say? It says, come back together again unless the devil tempt you for your incontinence. Amen. So, it, it, you know, the, the, the best thing for a man and a woman to do is to be married, take care of each other's sexual problem, desires, and then everything's in balance and check. Amen. It's a different story if you're a widow or if you're a single. I'm not really going to get in tonight. But, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say this much. I've been widowed. And I'll tell you right now, God will give you grace. <laughs> he will give you grace. And I'm not a person to be a single person. I guarantee you, I am not. I'm never meant to be a single person. But I guarantee you, God gave me grace when I was a, when I was a widower. Amen. He gave me grace to get through that. He did. Now, I didn't say I liked it, but he gave me grace. You know, some people think that the, the some of the strongest forces in the, in the world that God has made is like the air and and water and things like that, but I, I can think it's more sex, food, and having children. Amen. And that's some of the strongest things of God. And you know how that's all good and proper when it's done right. Amen. That's right. That's the way God made this, and He did that for a reason. So it would be fruitful and multiply, didn't He? Didn't He? Amen. So the, the second thing that I that I see in Scripture is why 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 pornography and masturbation is wrong is is that people use it as a substitute for fornication. Amen. Now, I, and, and, and I've I had people say this to me. Well, I just watch porn because I don't want to go out and fornicate with women. You can't, you can't take one sin and substitute for another sin, church. It, that's not going to work, amen. Now, I'm going to tell you this much. I will admit, one has a few less, one has a few less uh, complications. In other words, if you go out and fornicate with a woman, she can get pregnant or vice, you know, or if she fornicates with a man, she can end up being pregnant. You could get AIDS. I mean, you know, because there's a lot of stuff going around. Amen. And there's what there's reasons that God, some of these laws that God is putting for us is for our own protection. Amen. We don't go around sleeping with a hundred people because what happens? You get AIDS. Amen. So it's just a law that God has placed for us. Amen. For our own good and our own protection. 
So someone that does that, they're not going to get someone pregnant, they're not going to get AIDS, but you're still replacing one sin for another sin, church. And that, that, that's not, that don't work, amen. God still calls us to holiness, don't he? He does, amen, he does. So, you know, don't let sexual sins be the elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about. I mean, because there's a, how many know there's a season for everything? Ecclesiastes says, there's a time and a season for everything. Amen. And there's just times with the Lord that says, open your mouth and speak. Amen. And that's just not me. That's all of you. Amen. It's all of you. You know, I don't want to be that kind of Christian that just won't, when I see that there's an issue and someone's off going into hell and, I, and I'm like an ostrich that's got my head and saying, I don't want to talk about sex. I don't want to talk about sex. It makes me uncomfortable. And the person ends up dying and going to hell because I'm uncomfortable talking about sex. It's not good at the church. Amen. It's not good. And that's not the way that God has designed things. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're old enough, mature enough that we know when, there's, when it's time to say something, it's time to say something. And if it hurts people's feelers, it hurts people's feelers. Amen. Amen. Just remember that, you know, if, if we burn, we marry. Amen. We pray for God and we wait for God to bring us the right partner, amen, and he will, if we ask, he will bring us, why, because God honors marriage, amen, if you want to serve God, and you want to be married, God is going to answer that prayer, it might not be the exact moment you wanted answered, but you can take it to the bank, he's going to answer that, why, because that's within his will, amen, that's within his will for you to have a wife and a husband, amen, but one sin for another is not the answer, now, and I mentioned it just a minute ago, but, you know, you can't, you cover, what What happens sometimes is people, they carry over an addiction. I mean, know that if you marry somebody and your husband is a drunk, if you got some grand illusion that after, the day after you wake up from the honeymoon, he's no longer going to be a drunk, you're delusional. He's going to be a drunk. Amen. And if he's an addict, he's going to be an addict. If he's a sex addict, he's still going to be a sex addict. Amen. You if I had a dollar for every person that I seen going into a marriage that they never should have went into because there was something really seriously going on wrong, I'd be a pretty wealthy person, amen. I mean, we've got to be careful, amen. What we do, how we partake in the marriages, don't we, church, amen? It's not, it's not a casual thing that we just take lightly. Some people do take it lightly, and guess what happens to their marriages? It's in trouble real quick, and then they have ten marriages. They can't figure why they're all failing, amen. But, you know, and I've, tell, I've told people, and, and you, you should have this, always be able to tell this to somebody. If, 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 if they're thinking about getting married to somebody and there's something that's not right in their life, they need to get to the altar or they need to do whatever it is they have to do to get that problem fixed. And then when you are absolutely sure that that problem is fixed and God has released them, then you start talking about marriage. But if you go into a marriage where someone has an issue, you, you are in bad trouble. And if I had and another one, if I had another dollar for every woman that said he, she was going to change that man when they got married, it don't work. Amen. It don't work. And they, they end up very delusioned. Amen. Amen. I, you know, I wouldn't marry someone with a drug addiction, would you? Would you? Would you marry, you know, or, or someone that was a drunk? And it's the same thing with any sexual problems. We don't, we don't want to go into a covenant relationship with somebody that is in a sexual sin. Why? Because you know what? When you come into a covenant... With somebody that's in sin, you know what you just did? You just come into covenant with the demons that possess them. Think about that in the church. And then because when you join yourself to a woman or you join yourself to a man, ladies, you're one flesh with that person. And all the, the mind influences that they have in their life, now you got to deal with them. Why? Because you're one flesh, amen? So that's a serious matter. So if you, if you have kids, or if you have daughters, ladies, or men, if you have grandsons, or if you have great-grandsons or granddaughters or whatever the case is, or you have a neighbor girl down the road knocking on your door, just be frank with them and tell them, amen. If they, if they're there, if they ask you, then you need to tell them, amen. You need to tell them. And it's every bit as bad as a drug addiction. I'm going to tell you, church, it's every bit as worse. It might be even worse because the attitudes that people have towards it. I've heard people say, get up in the church and say, you know, uh, I, I was I was a cocaine addict and I've been clean six months. I went to treatment center and got got clean, clean cleaned up and praise the Lord I got saved and the Lord saved me and in the crowd goes well hallelujah. Let someone walk in the door and say, Church, you know I was addicted to pornography, I was a homosexual, but God saved me and I mean people are gonna sit there like, it'd be dead silent in the church. 
Amen. How many know, church, that's the wrong attitude to have towards someone? You know what? Sin is sin, amen. When it comes to, 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 to salvation and damnation, sin is sin, ain't it? Amen. And the, the Bible says that it, it, under the law, if you keep the whole law, but you break one law one time, then you're guilty of breaking every law continuously. So we're all saved by grace, amen. We're all saved by grace. And, you know, we we, we, we got to have an attitude. When, when we counter somebody that has a sexual issue, we got to just look at them with God's love, amen, and say, you know what, brother, or you know what, sister? Maybe I do, or maybe I don't understand what you're going through, amen. But I'm going to do my best to try to help you. And if I can't help you, I'll find someone that will, amen. That's always a good attitude to say, amen. How many know that, I'm kind of getting off the topic here, but ladies, if a man comes to you and says, I got some kind of sexual problem, the first thing out of your mouth says, you need to go find a man. That's what you need to tell him. Amen. And men, if a woman comes to you and says she got a sexual problem, then you tell you need to go find a woman. Or I'll, or say something along the lines, I'll go get my wife and we'll be back in a half hour. Amen. And then we'll talk to you right there with my wife there. Or I'll go get my husband and we'll be back a half hour and talk to you. Amen. Why? Because there's a proper order to do things, ain't there? Amen. There's just things that you don't do in the church. Amen. And there's a proper order to do that. And that's what we do. That keeps any concept of sin, and that keep that protects you and them both, and it protects everybody, don't it, amen? That you're not tempted into some, into some kind of sin. Amen? And how many know that if, 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 if as men, as we've grown and mature, and we, we overcome youthful lust, because the scripture calls them youthful lust, it says flee youthful lust, amen, and pursue holiness, we can just get up and say, by the grace of God. I mean, by the grace of God, I'm not that person sitting out there doing whatever deviant activity. By the grace of God, I'm not a drunk. By the grace of God, I'm not an addict. And that's the truth of the ancient church. It's by the grace of God that we have and we are what we are. <clears throat> the third reason that, that masturbation is wrong is it's gluttony. It's gluttony. Now, the, you know, usually the church, when they see the word gluttony, they think, oh, that people overeat. Well, that is true. You know, that is, that is, you, you do find that in Scripture. But really, in the Scripture... You see, gluttony is, is referred to in other ways. It really is a desire to have anything in excess for the purpose of self-gratification. So if you want to eat yourself into a stupor, that's gluttony, amen? If you, and there's other examples in Scripture that calls alcoholism gluttony. If you want to drink yourself into a stupor, that's gluttony, amen? If you want to do something sexually that's, without, that's not within the confines that the Scripture tells you to do it in, that's gluttony, amen? Gluttony could be food, money, sex, sleep, drugs, fame, amen. And what it is, it's an idolatry. It's putting something else before God, amen. It's putting something else before God is what it is. Proverbs 23 says that gluttony leads to laziness, which leads to poverty. It leads to poverty. Amen. And that could be food, and that could be alcohol, and that could be drugs. Have you ever, I mean, because, you know, really, have you ever seen just, I mean, I know some people are functioning alcoholics. I know there is some functioning drug addicts, but for the most part, what happens to a person when they become an alcoholic or a drug addict? They really become no earthly good for the most part, don't they? Amen. They don't become any earthly good. Amen. And there's different scriptures that says that you know that gluttony and alcoholism go hand in hand. Proverbs 28:7 says it is shameful to be friends with a gluttonous person. And that doesn't mean gluttonous people in the world. That really means brothers, people that call themselves Christians, and they want to live in sin. Amen. That's a shame to be around that person. Because there's a difference between people in the world. To get away from the people in the world, we have to leave this world, the scripture says, amen. But it says not to associate with someone who calls herself a brother or sister and is in sin and refuses to repent, amen. That's what that's talking about. Masturbation, it, it, uh, it, 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 it diverts from God's original design for sex. I mean, this is so simple. Sex is a man and a woman, amen. Now, this is a big one in in a church, and when I put this on YouTube, I'm going to get blown up, I guarantee you, <laughs> amen. Sex is a man and a woman, amen. It's a, it's a man's sexual organ and a woman's sexual organ, and that's it, amen. You know, when I was a kid, uh, we, like when we work on a car or something, you'd have a bolt, and they called that a male. You'd have a nut, they called that a female, amen. If you don't put two bolts together, it don't work that way. You have to have a bolt and a nut, and that's it. That's it. I mean, you can't put two nuts together. You can weld them on there and say, look, I put two nuts together. No, that's not the way it works. I mean, you can weld two bolts together, but you ain't got the natural design of thing. A bolt is a bolt and a nut is a nut. I mean, we all understand that. Amen. 
You know, in Leviticus, it goes extensively into this, and it says that, you know, the seed of a man belongs in the womb of a woman. You can look these up if you want to in Leviticus 15, chapter, the 15th chapter of Leviticus. And if the seed of a man is on anything but inside the womb of a woman, it makes that, that thing, that person, or whatever touches unclean. Amen. It makes it unclean. And God has a natural order for everything in this world, don't he? Amen. The fifth reason that masturbation is a sin, amen, is it mocks God's symbolism of marriage. It mocks God's symbolism of marriage. You know, what, 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 what is the, marriage, the symbolism of marriage, amen? A man and a woman come to a covenant agreement, and then they come together in, in sexual intercourse. And that's actually, you know, marriage, even, even, even in the Bible and even today in our country, marriage is really legally defined in two acts. You, you have the marriage ceremony, and you have the consummation. And legally, you are not married, church, until you consummate the marriage. Did you know that? You are not married until you consummate that marriage. So marriage is two act. It's, it's, the, it's the covenant. We, we vow our, to take our vows with each other, and then we consummate the marriage in intercourse. And so when you do something outside of that, then you, you, you are taking away from the, from the framework, from the ideal that God has made for marriage and for intercourse. Amen. That, that's, that's just how that is. <coughs> and we see that same relationship, the scripture in Christ and the church. You know, we, we, we're saved, we have a covenant with Christ that we will follow him and we'll be saved, amen. What does the scripture say? We become one spirit with Christ, amen. And we are the, also, the church is the spouse bride of Christ, amen. We are the bride of Christ waiting for our bridegroom. And sexual self-gratification, it distorts that symbolism and it makes it, a, it, makes it about self-pleasure and not, a, not about the way that God designed things to be, church, amen. The sixth reason you see, if masturbation is so right, then why do people feel so guilty when they do it? Amen? Why is your conscience? Listen, you know, the church, the, the scripture says that anything not of faith is sin. Did you know that? So if you do anything, it defies your conscience. And it can be completely right. I mean, it, it, by, the, by the scriptures, it can be completely right. But if you don't know it's right, and your conscience is defiled, then you are in sin. Amen? Anything that you do outside of faith, amen, is sin, is what the scripture says. Amen. So if your conscience is defiled, you better get on the altar and, and get forgiveness. Amen. You better get some resolution with the Lord because that's not because if, if, if you're defiled, then you're not walking in faith. Anything not of faith is sin. Okay, probably this is one of the most important sections, and we'll close out here. Things that we can do to set people free. Amen. So what if, if someone comes to us and, and uh, your granddaughter comes to you, or your grandson comes to you and says, my wife is doing this, or my son is doing this. <clears throat> what in the world are we going to tell them? What are we going to tell them? And here's some things that, that will help us to set people free. Number one is that demons love secrets. Did you know that? Demons love secrets. Amen. James 5.16 says, confess your faults one to another. Amen. And pray for one another.